the next morning, we have a quick breakfast and head out of Alumia to continue towards Cosa Coral. We walk through familiar rolling hills and grassy knolls, late into dusk. As we pass Meadow Hill, I'm washed with a feeling of nostalgia. This is where my adventure started. My thoughts wander back to my family home. Do they know I'm gone? How much time has passed for me? Is the passage of time here even even if it's not a burden? What if I go home and everyone's grown home? Will I even be able to go home? I glance at Leanna. What would have happened if I'd never met her? Would I still be wandering aimlessly around Highland Guard? Lana looks over at me, feeling my gaze on her, and smiles on her. Her smile calms me and quiets my mind. There's no point in focusing on what else. I should focus on the here and now instead. As the sun begins to set, we camp and turn in for the night. I yawn widely as the soft song of morning pulls me out of the sleep. As the campsite focuses into view, I spot Leanna's empty bedroll and muster the energy to crawl out of bed. Time to get training so I can start my day. I quickly get ready to meet Leanna, who is waiting for me a short distance away from the rest of the camp. She smiles warmly as I approach. Good morning! Morning! Leanna hesitates and then steps close to me. I pause in surprise as her lips press my cheek in a full peck. When she pulls away, I see the color rise in her cheeks. She bites her lip, suddenly shy at my lack of response. Any trace of sleepiness I had a moment ago has disappeared and I am wide awake. I think I just became a warning person. Anagram. Are you ready to get started? Yeah. What are we doing first today? Casting or sparring? Both. Huh? We're gonna practice magic augmentation. Now that you've improved in the fundamentals of both sword fighting and casting, we're gonna try to use your magic to enhance your swordsmanship. She unsheathes her sword, and the crystal in her manipulator shines to light. She's soon enveloped in a gentle glow. That's a uh, mage, mage knight specific skill, isn't it? It's definitely a strong factor in what makes a mage knight so formidable. Now unsheathe your sword and channel your energy. The magic can help lighten the weight of your sword and make your swings faster and more concise. I gather the one magic and direct it towards my blade. It feels as light as a feather, like it could float out of my hand. She looks pleasantly surprised. Yes, you got it. Okay, now when you swing your sword, use the air around you to push the sword in the direction you want it to go. Okay. I visualize my sword as a magnet attracting the air around it. Like a hot knife through butter, my sword slices through the air with a sharp ring. Wow. I felt no resistance at all. As my sword completes its arc, a wave of energy flies towards Vienna. She raises her blade and easily deflects the wind. Sorry! Vienna stares at me with her mouth agape. Were you trying to do that? No, I just practiced a swing. Like you said. Her expression starts to warn of admiration. What you did was actually an advanced technique which requires a lot of energy and concentration. I can't believe you were able to do that without trying. Huh. That's pretty cool. I twirl my sword, enjoying how easily it cuts through the air. I could get used to this. Wind augmentation is pretty awesome. The anagram. Since you've been able to pick this up so quickly, are you ready to put it into practice? Yeah. Riding my blade, Leanna matches my fighting stance. We go through the motions, as we have many times before, but this time I filter energy into my blade. As she moves to strike, I easily evade her attack. Without the weight of gravity, my return strike nearly catches her off guard. Good! She grins in approval and moves in for another attack. 
This time, I repel the attack with my blade and parry. She ducks out of the way. For once, I am able to keep up with Liana's attacks using my augmenting abilities. Then I see Liana's sword go out. Is she going to augment her abilities too? Her expression becomes stern as she thrusts her sword towards me. Her movement is a blur, and I can barely catch the attack in time. Before I have a chance to regroup, she strikes me again, and this time I groan as I get knocked back. I don't think Kalyana's holding back or taking it easy on me anymore. She continues to overpower me in the sword fight. Her breaths come in labored wheezes. Even with my magic, I can't get through her defenses. Wait, my magic? She clearly is a better swordsman, but my magic has shown to be formidable too. As Liana prepares for another attack, I gather a ball of energy and blast wind magic at her. She uses her arms to guard her face as she deflects the blast. Her eyes flash, but there's a smile playing at her lips. In one smooth motion, she retaliates with her own gale. I dig my heels into the ground as I push back. Soon we're volleying, volleying wind attacks and sword strikes. In a last attempt to gain some ground on the battle, I channel as much energy as I can into one powerful windstorm to let it fly at Liana. She returns with her own ferocious gale and our energies clash between us. My windstorm cuts through her gale and knocks her down. She blinks up at me from the ground, stunned. What just happened? I I figured there was no way I could beat you in a sword fight with all your years of training. But I've been doing very well in casting and what about a better chance to beat you that way? That doesn't explain how you overpowered my cast. My training has obviously paid off? No, I mean that level of energy output should be impossible. She looks at my arm and inspects my manipulator. The type of crystal we have for you shouldn't be able to even handle that much energy without shattering. You know more about this stuff than I do. I don't know. Maybe the next city will have a shop that can help us take a look at it. If not, we can always buy you a new one. Sure. In the meantime, should we continue practicing? Appreciate that. That's enough training for today. The fragrant scent of breakfast wafts through the air, and my stomach growls. And I giggles. We better get some food in you. That's an idea I can get behind. We gather up our things and head back to the group. Once we return to the campsite, we have a quick breakfast. Afterwards, we clean up camp and get started on our journey. We follow the main road, breaking every so often to refuel and rest up. I'm getting more used to the long hours of walking, and I've even noticed more definition in my calves and legs. Eventually, the shadows grow long as the sun's rays loses its brilliance. We find a secluded area to make camp. We divide the setup duties for the camp. Uh, then I have a quiet dinner together. I'm feeling exhausted from my training this morning, and after all that traveling, I'm ready to just relax and recharge. It seems like my companions are feeling the fatigue too. After dinner, we sit by the fire and talk for a little while when I feel my eyelids begin to grow heavy. Soon the conversations come to a close as everyone disperses to go to bed. Before long, I drift off to sleep. I awaken bright and early next morning. Leanna and I have a quick spar and practice and return to the goop just in time for breakfast. After we finish eating and clean up the camp, we waste no time in resuming our journey towards the house close to Boro. It was kind of nice having her close to me all day though. The road towards Coast of Coral is clear, and we make good time. With the sun high in the sky, sweat pricks my skin. The temperature is much milder here than it was back north. It's a welcome change from the previous cold. We arrive at Coast of Coral in the afternoon. We pass through the gates. The first thing I notice is a sultry breeze coasting through the town. The houses and shops are built higher above ground than what I'm used to seeing 
with large wide windows to let in the sun and breeze. We pass through the main square. People pursue the shops, but the bustle isn't quite as busy as the previous towns. Shopkeepers laze by the desk, fanning themselves in the wide woven fans with wide woven fans. And the slow pace of the town calms me. This would be a really nice place to just relax for a few days. There's a bright smile on Liana's face as she enjoys the wind combing through her hair. Everyone seems to feel some tranquility I do. After passing through town, we find an inn where we settle down. We order some food and situate ourselves near the open window. Amelia immediately consults her notes. Now that we have arrived at Costa Coral, it would be in our best interest to survey the area and search for additional information which can lead to the Water Temple. No one answers her. I look at the rest of the group, and they're staring out the window. Following their gaze, the view of the inn overlooks brilliant white sands and crystal blue water. Hi. The buckle pops out from seemingly nowhere and settles near the window. It's so beautiful! Kara grins broadly and leans closer to the window to get a better look. Even Zack relaxes as he watches the gentle lapping of the waves. Only Amelia remains transfixed on her nose. Perhaps we should inquire with the locals here as to the whereabouts of the temple. Leanna reluctantly tears her gaze away from the beach. Well, I suppose we should do that. Or we could take a break from all that traveling and take some time to recharge and then scout for information. I vote that. Boing, boing. Pongo seconds the vote. Pongo's got good taste. Kara kneels down and pats the pongo on the head. He turns happily. We have arrived here for a purpose, and that purpose should be fulfilled. That's true, but wouldn't we have more success after we've had a chance to rest and can search with fresh eyes? I've been feeling a bit pale after spending so much time in the cold north. It'd be so nice to just relax and bask in the sun for a while. The beach sounds like a great idea. There's a pause as we blink at Zack. Really? Of course. Leanna wrinkles her brow. There's no reward for going to the beach. Not everything I do has to have a reward. Car smirks and wraps herself around Zack. Obviously, his motivation for going to the beach is to spend more time with me. I take it back. Let's do Amy's thing. Hey! The journey here has been long. I suppose a brief repose could be a good idea. Then it's settled. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't exactly pack my swim top. Good point. I noticed a few clothing shops we passed on our way here. Perhaps we may find something suitable within. Why don't we take a look at the shops, and then we all can meet down at the beach? We agree to the plan and begin to head off when Carl stops me and Zach. Nah, no boys allowed. What? It'll be way more fun if it's a surprise. Trust me. She winks and hurries out with Leanna and Amy before we can protest. That just leaves Zach and me to team up with the shop and shop for swimsuits. After leaving the inn together, we browse the local bazaar. We each flip through the racks. Zach grabs the first pair of dark swim trunks he finds and brings it up to the counter for breakfast. Wow, that was fast. He shrugs. It's not like it really matters. I take a look at a few different styles, but ultimately decide on an orange suit. After buying our suits, we head to the beach and to get changed. We carefully tread down the stairs carved into the wall of the cliff until our feet touch the warm sand. The beach is laden with visitors. Children build sand castles or race by the water, shrieking when the waves lap at their feet. Even more children play along the cliffs, chased by the parents who fiercely scold them. Most people lounge beneath the sun, flipping every so often to even out their tans. Zack and I wait for the girls in a more secluded spot. Boy! I glance down to see the Pongo has returned. 
You made it here before the girls. Poi. Is, it, is that just me, or does it sound disappointing? We continue to wait. And wait. So, Zach, what kind of swimsuits do you think the girls will get? Zach from. Nice ones, I would guess. I know. Really looking forward to seeing. What kind of swimsuit Leanna chooses, based on her reaction to wolf's dead armor? I guess she might cover up a bit more. Yeah, but don't forget, she actually kept the wolf's den armor. True. So maybe she secretly likes it, showing more scout. You'd know better than I would. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, if there's anyone she'd enjoy showing more skin to, it's certainly not me. I should see that with the thought. It's Kara. That... Yeah, it's probably very true. Exactly. Why don't we hear the girls before we see them? Carl leads the way and bounces into view. Her string bikini seems to be struggling to stay put. Hey guys! Were you waiting long? He responds with a low, guttural gurgle. Carl blinks. I mean, yes, we were waiting forever. She shot. She grins slightly. Sorry to keep you waiting. It took a while for me to find the perfect suit. She spins around. So, what do you think? Zach shrugs. It's fine. Kara pops. Before she can respond, Leanna and Amy catch up to us. Leanna's white bandeau suit hugs her in all the right ways, while Amy's pink ruffles make her keep them girly. I give Leanna once over. Forget about wolf's den armor. You should wear this every day. lot more friends if I wore this all the time. After hearing that, I become acutely aware of the lingering eyes on her as people pass by. Actually, never mind. In fact, maybe she back to what you were wearing before. Amy walks right past us and settles into the sand. Ah. Hey there, Amy. Greetings. What are you doing? I am selecting the prime location for me to begin my construction. Construction? Of the most structurally sound sand fortress. Boy, boy! The pongo bounds over to Amy and wobbles excitedly. Of course, you may be of assistance. Diana pulls me aside as Amy starts digging in the sand. Why don't we go check out the water? Good idea. I take Leanna's hand and lead her towards the ocean. She glances furtively back at the others, but nobody pays attention to us. Her fingers intertwine with mine as she smiles and graces her lips. She carefully dips her toe in the water. I watch with amusement as Leanna gently eases herself into the water. Once she's comfortable, she grins and motions me over. Hey! Almost splashed me, and I dive out of the way before we turn in the splash. She ducks from the water, but a few droplets catch her. She grins mischievously and uses her arm to send a small wave my way. Wow! Right to come out of the way, but the wave splashes my face. If that's how she wants to play. I use both my arms to send an even larger wave over in Leanna's direction. She automatically moves her arm into casting position, hoping to push the wave away from her. And realizes it's too late that she's still not wearing her manipulator. Old habits must die hard. The wave crashes around her. Oh, you are so going to regret that! Wow. Let's not do anything rash now! I try to turn the wave, but 
distance between her and my zone. For all I know, she's going to somehow send a tsunami my way. Man, as soon as she the gap. She closed the gap. We're just having fun, right? I rated myself for the worst. But to my surprise, Lana swims over to me and boots me on the nose. Huh? Won't you? She giggled. <laughs> I got you all riled up for nothing. Oh yeah? I grab her waist and pull her through. She gasps as she looks up at me, her chest against my nose. With the team back on the beach, I draw Leanna into a lingering kiss. Her eyes flutter as she breathlessly pulls away. Now who's the one all riled up? Still you. She playfully pushes me away, trying to mask the color in her cheeks. Leanna squeezes some of the water out of her hair. I think I'm ready to dry out a bit in the sun. Yeah, same here. Let's go check back with the others. Get back to the shore. I mean, the fortress looks to be nearly complete. That girl works fast. The pongo bounces from buttress to buttress, a little shovel in his mouth. That's cute. He's helping. Zach lounges on the sand, his eyes closed. Walker pouts beside him. She doesn't look too happy at Zach. As soon as she spots us, she brushes over to Leanna. I'm feeling kind of hungry. Are you hungry? Uh, let's go get some food. She grabs Leanna's hand and drags her over to the food cart. I stand next to Zach. What was that about? Meh. Zach leans back on the speech chair. Zach. I got you. What? What are you doing? I'm trying to relax. You should be relaxing with Kara. I was. She was right next to me. Maybe with your eyes open and focused on her? Zach rises to her eyebrow. Lana returns with an ice cream and seems excited to eat it. Kara trails behind her. She stops right in front of Zach, but turns to face Lana. I'm starving. When Leon looks at Kara, she seems just as powerful as ever. Kara reveals a banana and nothing else. I thought she was starving. She peels the banana and then carefully removes her fruit as far into her mouth as possible. Kara, be careful! If you take it all at once, you could choke! Car grins slowly and pulls out the intact banana out of her mouth. Oh, don't worry. I have great control over my gag reflexes. Zach starts coughing as his face turns red. But you're right. I'm just so hungry that I got a little eager. Is this better? She puts a sizable amount of banana in her mouth at once, then noticing Leanna's char... Chagrin carefully pulls back a lot. She takes in a bit more, then pulls back. I don't think she's actually planning on eating that banana. She makes eye contact with Zach. You have weird eating habits. Kara's eyes flash. She takes a vicious bite out of the banana. For some reason, I wince, and so does Zach. When she's done eating, Kara gets close to the end again. Oh, do you know what we forgot to do? Put on sunscreen! Leanna's eyes wide. You're right! You don't like to tan? It's not about tanning. It's about protecting your skin. Exactly! Kara leads Leanna over to the beach towels, and the two of them settle in. Then Kara smears a glob of sunscreen into her hands and starts rubbing the lotion across her chest. Zach's gaze is fixated on the gentle rhythm of her hands. Leanna follows Kara's lead and begins liberally spreading sunscreen over her skin. I'm mesmerized by the smooth flow of her hands across her supple skin, and I imagine her, my hands traveling up and down her body. Suddenly, Kara's lying on her stomach, the towel and motions to Leanna. Uh, I turn to Zach. You know, I couldn't see it when you were in on the bed and wolves den in this pose, but now I'm starting to understand what you mean. 
I told you, it's the most attractive pose. Maybe not most attractive, but pretty attractive. Liana, do you think you could help me with my back? I'll return the favor. Of course. Liana kneels beside her and squirts the lotion into her hands. Suddenly, the bikini strings across Kara's back fall to her sides, and then... You'll be able to reach more this way. Liana nods, then carefully rubs her hands along Kara's skin, making sure to spread the sunscreen evenly across her whole back. Oh, that feels so nice. Zack clears his throat and tries to look away, but his eyes are repeatedly drawn back to the girls. Even I start to feel the flush in my cheeks. I really wish I were Kara right now. As Leanna's hands travel up Kara's back, the strings holding her bikini up fall loosely to her side. Oops! That's okay. I don't want any tan lines anyway. Kara lets out a soft moan as Leanna finishes up her back. A small, strangled sound escapes the back of his throat. I look over and notice a stream of blood trickling out of his nose. Uh, I think he got a bit of something... A gesture to his nose. I'm fine. When Leanna is done, she helps retie Kara's swimsuit. As Kara stands, she turns around to speak to Zack, and smirks when she notices the nosebleed. Alright, Leanna, your turn. Dan looks back at us and frowns. Uh, maybe later, when we don't have so much of an audience. I can close my eyes if that helps. It doesn't. Zack and I get shooed away while Kara gives Leanna the same sunscreen treatment. Zack wipes his nose and quickly returns to his usual self while I sneak as many peeks at the girls as I can. Kara seems very familiar with Leanna. My mind wanders back to all those times they shared a room. What exactly happened behind closed doors? After a while, the girls return, and Carl throws a ball at us. Zack's lightning reflexes catch the ball. Nice catch! Where did you get this? Does it matter? Kara? I bought it, silly. It was with us the entire time. But I suppose you were a bit too distracted to notice. She was. What game are we playing? Beach ball. A classic beach game. How do you play? We'll split into teams. Me and Zach, and you and Leanna. We'll each stay on our own sides of the court and try to hit the ball over to the other side without letting it drop to the ground. This sounds suspiciously like beach volleyball. With Leanna on my team, we're sure to win. You're on! There's no way my dream team will lose. Yeah! We have that. Oh yeah? Should we make a wager? I pale as I remember the last time we made a wager. Uh huh. Let's just keep it a friendly match this time. Carlos. You better get into position or this first serve will be an automatic point for me. Leanna and I hurry over to the other side of the court. There's a towel placed in the sand to divide the two sides. Kara serves first, and Leanna dives to bump it. And I spike it over the side, expecting the ball to smash into the ground, but Zack saves it and bumps it over. I scramble to reach it, but it lands gently in the sand. Okay, that wasn't the strongest start. It isn't long before Zack and Kara get into the swing of things. Soon the volley to either side takes longer and longer. At one point, Amy wanders over and sits down to the sidelines to watch. On the last volley, Kara spikes the ball over to our side. Leanna dives to bump it but misses it by her breath, and the ball bounces in the sand. Leanna lets out a frustrated groan. She serves the ball hard and it flies out of the court. Ah! It's okay! How did Karin get Zack get so good? I have no idea. We can't let this get to us. It's like you say with my training. Stay focused and filter out all distractions. Leanna nods determinedly. You're right! She closes her eyes and takes a few deep breaths. Feel calmer? She smiles as she opens her eyes. Yep! I'm ready to win! 
Are you ladies here to talk or play? My scowl. Nowhere to win. Could have fooled me. Just have the ball. Although Leanna and I try our hardest to keep up, we can't close the lead that Car and Zach maintain. Ultimately, we end up losing. He has pouts as Car and Zach celebrate. I still don't understand how they're so good. Neither do I. Amy brushes herself off as she stands. It is because they play upon each other's strengths. Kara's dexterity and swift reflexes allows her free range to set up the ball for Zack's powerful strikes. We did that. I mean, that gives me a blank look. Uh, sort of. That's pretty smart of them. We mostly just split the court in half and figured if the ball fell into whoever's half, that's who would try to hit it. They really are a perfect match. The car throws her arms around Zack as she jumps up and down in celebration. A broad smile splits his face and Zack's arms around her too. Suddenly he seems to realize what he's done and quickly lets go. The car grins and scoots back close to him. We make a great team, don't we? You're pretty good at this. Oh, was that a compliment I just heard? Zach crosses his arms. Don't make a big deal out of it. Well, you're pretty good at this too. With the game over, we all gather together and hang out. The sun begins descending in the sky and we enjoy the light breeze billowing around us. Collectively, we relax in the sand and enjoy the last warmth of the sun. I close my eyes as I soak in the rays, but I still feel a bit restless. I know, Juliana. Let's go for a walk. Sure. Brushing out the sand, I get to my feet, and the two of us walk in pace. The beach expands out onto the horizon. Brilliant colors paint the sky as the sun kisses the ocean line. We pass by cliffs. And both Leanna and I hear voices. She stiffens, and she goes on high alert. Do you hear that? Yeah. We pick up the pace and make out frantic yelling. Help! Somebody help! My head swings around as I glance wildly about me, and my gaze focuses on a small boy gripping the edge of the cliff with his tiny fingers. His face is a wash of panic as tears stream down his face. A woman, who I assume is the mother, screams for help, tears glistening in her eyes as a crowd of clowns forms around them. Leanna breaks from me and races to address the boy. I'm close on her heels. Everything is going to be okay! I just need you to keep holding on, okay? The, boys, the boy chokes out his words between sobs. Kid! Don't let go! Just keep holding on! Damn it! I need my manipulator! She turns on her heel to sprint back towards the group and our belongings. Leanna! Make sure he holds on! I'll be right back! My heart races as she disappears from view. The boy swings precariously on the cliff side. She'll never make it in time. I can't! You can do it! Just hold on a bit longer, okay? My hands are. <laughs> Time slows as the boy's fingers slip. I feel helpless as I watch one hand flail and then the other, and suddenly the boy disappears as he falls. My ears pound to the beat of my heart, and all the sounds are muted as if washed away by the ocean. He rushes through the air, but time seems too slow as I reach out my arm. The only thought in my head is to save him. I want him to slow. It's falling too fast. Slow down. Gather the wind around him and slow down. And to my surprise, he does. His descent slows and slows until he's hovering just above the ground, and then he drops ungracefully into the sand, but ultimately unhurt. His mother is right by his side, clutching him to his chest. His sobs are drowned by the tears of his mother, and she scolds him with a mixture of harsh words and kisses. The scene replays in my head over and over again. How he was falling, and then he wasn't. I remember reaching out my arm, and then the wind that saved him wasn't from me. 
I can still feel the lingering tingle in my arm as the energy dissipates. Gradually the shock wears off, and I feel life return to my limbs. I'm a bit groggy, like I've just woken up from a nap, but I still notice the intense stares of a few people are hitting me. Whispers snake around me, and I catch words like casting and impossible. That was magic, wasn't it? The boy slowed down and then stopped in midair. You saw it, didn't you? But who could have cast it? Must have been a mage out here, watching. Yeah. They glance around, looking for anyone who could be suspicious, and their gaze is land on me. Uh-oh. As their eyes now, Leanna finally returns and rushes over. The team is right behind her. Are things already gathered? Leanna gently urges me to move. Now that the boy is safe, we should get moving. Indeed, it will only cause more questions the longer we stay. As we trudged up to the cliffside stairs, I can't stop wondering. Was that me? I know I wanted to save the kid, but I wasn't wearing my manipulator. That's impossible, isn't it? And yet I feel the unmistakable tinge of magic through my arm. Kara voices my thoughts in a low, urgent voice. What happened back there? I... I don't know. You cast it. What? Somehow, you have discovered a method in which you can cast without your manipulator. I thought that was impossible. Yes, however, absorbing energy directly is impossible too. For you to use that internal energy to cast is a new occurrence for all of us. We don't know how to channel magic without a manipulator, so we could only teach you to cast in the only way we know how. Do you believe you could replicate such a casting? I'm not sure. Maybe here isn't the best place to be discussing this. Zach and I's crowds of people are rushing past us, presumably to check out on the bay, on the beach. Yeah, let's get to the end first. We all change out of our swimsuits and then we group. Carol leads the way and soon brings us to the end as night falls. We settle down in a secluded corner, all wearing grave expressions. The more I think about it, the more I'm able to come to grips that I cast it from within, and the more excited I feel. After all, I did. I just did the impossible. The silence is stifling. I can feel the questions teetering on the edge of my team's lips, but no one seems willing to speak up first. I want to see if I can cast that again, but the inn isn't the best place to do that. Leanna's the first to break the silence. So, the beach. I look at her. You cast it without a manipulator. Yeah. Hearing that still sounds so weird and unnatural. How did you do it? I have no idea. Everything happened so fast. Perhaps you can recall certain stimuli which may have affected you differently. The kid was falling, and I didn't want him to get hurt. And then it just happened. Was there a technique you used which is different than what you normally do? I don't know. I reached out, and then energy shot out of my arm. Did the energy feel any different? And he raises the brown car. What? I'm not a caster. Um, maybe a bit more concentrated? I don't really remember. My mind was focused on other things. Amy frowns. There must have been an effect which triggered the change in the cast. Something which allowed you to connect with your inner reservoir of energy. If you could just recall what it is, you could replicate the cast. Mm. My mind is a swirl of thoughts. Yeah, no, this is my discomfort. Maybe we should table this discussion for later. It is imperative that we discover how to recreate the cast. I agree, but we may be more successful if he tries to cast again. And the inn isn't the ideal place to practice. We process the noise. You are correct. We shall attempt to recast again when we are more isolated. 
Maybe we should figure out our next steps for finding the Water Temple. You're right. We had our break at the beach, but we did come here for a reason. This city is the closest to the islands among the coast. If I recall correctly, the exact location of the Water Temple has been lost to even Elderism. My assumption would be that it is located on one of those islands, similar to how the Wind Temple was located on the Floating Isles. An intelligent assumption, but one that will keep you from the true location, I fear. We turn to the stranger approaching our table. His silver hair is pulled back out of his face to reveal kind brown eyes. He's tall in stature, with a sturdy build, but the rugged lines on his face show his age. He offers us a genuine smile through his full beard. That which has been hidden from memory is safely stored beneath nature's rocky peaks. What? Who is this guy? Why is he eavesdropping on our conversation? Zack narrows his eyes. And who are you? Just a simple bard. The man's eyes light up. He closes up. I warned the lonely soul not to seek comfort from the sea, for her will cannot be tamed, and when she pulls him into a watery bosom for his death, she cannot be blamed. Suddenly, Leanna leaps out of a chair. It topples over with a clatter. Her cheeks are rosy and her voice grows in enthusiasm as she finishes the re recitation. And yet still he sought her bravely, waiting ever deep. And far beneath her sea foam lace, his secrets she will keep. Her eyes shine with a bright wonder as she stares at, at transfixed at the man. He grins at her. That was beautiful. I thank you. I love the poetry of Gigalane. It's great to meet someone who also knows of his work. The man grins, but doesn't say more. When did you come across his poem? Just after I finished writing it, I suppose. Leanna looks as if she's just had a heart attack. Y you're giggling? He nods and bows slightly. Leanna takes in a sharp breath of air and squeals excitedly. I can't believe I'm talking to THE giggling! She hops up and down in excitement and giggles like a schoolgirl. Her face is flushed, and there are stars in her eyes. Your poems and stories are what got me through my toughest years at the Academy! W would it be okay if... I mean, it's just such an honor. Can I shake your hand? In response, King Galen holds Lee in his hand and, up, and she lets out a squeak at his touch. I am honored to meet someone who has such a deep appreciation for my work. Giggling? Kara and Zach wear the same blank expression I have. You don't know him? The famous bard! He's traveled throughout Asaria, recording the stories of adventurers. His poems are known throughout Havengard. He's a legend. You give me too much credit. You're just being humble. Diana looks completely smitten. Leanna speaks really highly of him, and I haven't seen her this excited about anything else. Maybe it's worth worth, worth checking out. Well, I'd love to read one of your poems. You're too kind. Perhaps I could give you a live performance if there's time. He taps his flute. Nothing in his eyes grow wide. A live performance would be the best thing ever. Oh, actually, I think I have heard of this guy. You wrote about the thief and the purple marble, right? He seems pleasantly surprised. Mm, one of my earlier works. I am pleased people are still familiar with it. It is a fun little tale. That doesn't explain why you're here, or why you were listening in on us. Oh, I'm sorry if I overstepped, but it's been a long time since I'd heard anyone talk about the temples. I couldn't help but be interested. And it sounds like you could use some help, too. 
I can guide you to the entrance of the Water Temple. It's located below the mountain valley. How do you know where it is? No, his As a bard, I do come across all manner of stories and information. He strokes his beard and thought. If you're open to the suggestion, I'd be happy to show you where it is. Why would you want to join us? I'll admit my motives are a bit selfish. If your adventure is seeking out the temple, I'd like to share in your adventure. Leanna gasps. You want to record a story about us? You know, I promise I won't be dead weight. I know the journey through the temples is treacherous, but I have heard a lot about them through my own travels. Zach seems skeptical. Stories are stories. How do we know if your information is accurate? Yeah, that one about the thief seemed pretty fantastical. Because he's Gingalane! He doesn't need to make up stories. He bases them all on real events. Throughout this, Amelia has been scanning through all the Rissom's notes. Perhaps there is merit in what the Bard says. If even Elder Isim had difficulty locating it, then it must be well hidden. We do know that the Aquarians use the nearby mountains as defenses against neighboring tribes. It is not unlikely that the temple could have been built within the mountain. Difficult terrain deters unwanted visitors. Then it's settled. Gangalan can lead us to the temple. It would be valuable to have the aid of a knowledgeable bard such as he. I spent many a late night reading through his tales of past heroes. They are quite fascinating. They deserve all the recognition they've received. Kara eyes the people trickling into the end. They talk animatedly about the secret mage at the beach today. It is getting a bit late. Maybe we should turn in for the night. We can head to the Water Temple tomorrow with the help of our new guide. Agreed. I also don't really want to listen to people talk about the beach instead. What if there's an unlikely chance someone recognizes me? King Lance smiles at us and pushes himself to his feet. I'm very excited to see this next adventure unfold. I will meet you here in the morning. We see our goodbyes and head upstairs. As I get ready for bed, I notice the Pongo never returned. He's probably decided to spend the night with the girls. The lucky Pongo gets to go wherever he likes. I crawl into my bed and eventually fall into a dreamless sleep. Mm -hmm.